he's always been um, very humble, very smart, very funny. And it was just um, such a blessing having an opportunity to interact with him, hang out. When he used to take us to the park when we were little, crack jokes and just love on his girlfriend. So I, I'm not surprised that he is doing as well as as he is doing in, in his uh, family. Essentially, his grandmother has always had him prayed up. So he's going to always be on top. So I'm just grateful that you took your memories and you transformed them literally into a work of art. But what is that like when you put these particular pieces together as opposed to using oils on canvas or something like that? Because as an educator, some people who are listening to the podcast, they will find out that they can go to your website and, you know, um, choose to purchase some of your prints. But that's a little different than like uh, one of the paintings that you had at the reunion that we were uh, attempting to auction off. So can you just like tell us the difference between the prints as opposed to the oils on canvas? No problem. No problem. Um, pretty much those, the pieces of Will Smith and I, I do have an actual piece of Will Smith in that series as well as Jazzy Jeff. Those pieces are what you call mixed media collage. Pretty much. I could do a little bit of everything. I could do, I can work in oils as well as do collage work. And those particular pieces uh, when I was when I went about creating them, it was so funny because I um, if you look on the background, the background of those pieces, it's nothing but separate mm-hmm. trespasses. Yeah, I did that on purpose. <laughs> yeah, I, I was looking. <laughs> I so, have a part- but see, that's what I was trying to figure out. Like, this is really art. Like, this is something new. This is something different. And art inspires, you know. Mm. So when I when I look, I, I just had this feeling like, mm, this is a little, this is unique. This is something different. I saw the septa passes. You had some food in there that represented Philly. Um, dates, times. It's, it's different. It's, it's unique. You even had the schedule. Oh, yeah. I have a partnership with septa. I have a partnership with them because I, I met up with septa many years ago. I was using there because what I used to do and I used to go down and catch the L and all the other trains. I used to go down to like suburban station. I used to just take hands full, handfuls of maps and everything. And I used to take them back mm-hmm. to my studio and I used to actually incorporate them into my artwork. So mm-hmm. as years went on, I had I had a friend told me, they were like, will not you go ahead and just call Sept up and tell them, tell them what you're doing with their materials? So I was like, man, I might yes. as well give them a call because I'm using their stuff. So yes. I called them up. This is many years ago. The person at that time, my contact person was Jerry Williams, who was um, public relations. She's in charge of public relations at Septa. So I told her what I was doing, and she was like, can you send some images? I just want to see what this stuff looks like. So I sent the images of what it looks like. And I told her, I was like, you know, I want, I, I need materials in order to continue to make this stuff. So the deal I cut yes. with, with SEPTA was, SEPTA, I told them, if you give me some trans passes and bus schedules, I'll make it a tar. And then I will show you guys, and I will give all you right. a piece. I'll give you a piece after all is said and done. <laughs> So needless to say, around that time, right. <laughs> they gave me the supplies. They gave me all the trans passes and everything. Because I went down there to the, to, um, the headquarters at 1220, um, 1234 Market Street, showed up. They gave me like boxes of old trans passes and bus schedules. So what I did, I took all that's, that material, awesome. you know, took all that stuff, dragged it home. <laughs> and around that time, it's so funny. I had my daughter, my daughter. At that time, she was born around the same time as I was getting the materials. So what I did was I took those materials, the seven materials, and created a whole series about my about my daughter, Autumn. And around that time, that was my first child. She's my first child. This is my first thing of, of being yes. a father. So I wanted to celebrate mm-hmm. being a father. So I took, we, we, my wife and I, we took over a thousand baby pictures. And what I did was I took the best ones I could find and I blew them up. I blew blew these things up into like real large sizes. And what I was doing, I would put the trans passes and the um, bus schedules down. Then I would actually take pictures of her and mount them right on top of the trans passes and stuff. So I had about maybe 20 of these pieces that I created from that series. I call it the Autumn Series, named after my daughter, of course. So after all was said and done, I, I finished this whole series. I sent the images mm-hmm. to Septa, letting them know what I was doing. And they were like, hey, 
we like what you're doing. Can you come down to 1234 and have, do a do a one man show down there? Just do an art show, showcasing all these pieces. All and right. I, yeah. So <laughs> I went down there, had the show, and the rest is history. Now, right now, I'm working on something with Scepter right now. Right? Uh, we're in contracts. I'm going through contract negotiations with them now. Um, the project I'm working hey. on with them now is we want to honor the workers. We're doing like a it's COVID. It's like a COVID theme working with mm. SEPTA drivers, like because SEPTA drivers are considered essential workers. So we want to honor yes, these. Yes, they are. Yeah, we definitely want to honor these guys. So I'm in cahoots right now with SEPTA. We're working out the details. My my whole entire vision for this is I told them I want to I want you to select fifteen of your fifteen of your workers. It could be bus drivers, maintenance people, whatever. Let's let them shine because they were the ones going to work while everybody else was at home during the COVID crisis. Yes. So that is something that, that we're working on right now. <laughs> that is a. Uh... Amazing. I am just, you know, Chad, because you received an award. For those of you who may or may not know, Chad was awarded and he has a plaque um, from Plans of Action Houston and the committee of the class of 1992 for all of his exceptional work. But when I tell you, for you to establish a partnership with SEPTA and honor our men and women who have been on the front lines. I actually have a, a cousin that's worked for SEPTA for years, and my brother used to work for SEPTA as well. I mean, that is just commendable. So I will be there because, yes, I mm -hmm. am one of your cheerleaders as well, Thank so that you. I can just continue to spread the news and share this beautiful art with everyone. But I need to back up. This beautiful daughter of yours, okay, who stole the show at the reunion, by the way. <laughs> Autumn, oh yes, honey, Autumn is something else. She's so precious. Thank you. When I tell you I fell in love with the artwork that is on your Facebook page. So by the time this is over, I'm sure some people are going to come and visit, but it is truly a masterpiece. That is just too precious. And I was trying to figure out what exactly or how exactly you did it, but you explained it you know, just a few moments ago because you're mounting on the, the photos and, you know, I, I'm looking at the picture and I'm like, is he drawing this? It looks like a photograph, but then I see other things in the background and then I see something that looks like paint. So I wasn't really sure, but it's beautiful. It's beautiful and it's very inspiring. So, yes. Yeah, with those particular the ones with my daughter on it, most of those, um, the backgrounds are hand painted. I did paint okay. right over top of the trans passes and everything. What I, wow. my whole goal is I want, I want to represent Philly anywhere I go. I want to represent it in my work. Hey, I, hey I don't we rep that. hard. Don't we go hard for Philly? What? Oh yeah. I tell, <laughs> I tell people that I'm like, look, if you can't represent where you come from, then I don't know what to tell you because that's one thing. And, and I tell people this, the Rocky story is even though Rocky was a fictional character, it still resonates. It still resonates within the Philadelphia culture. Come on that, now. It still that, inspires. Yeah, it, it still inspires. inspires. Yes. And that's what you want. That's what you, you know, I, yeah. when I go and I, like I teach up in Delaware and I, I tell people, I say, you know, if you live in Delaware, be proud of where you come from. I live, I'm from Philly. I'm proud of where I come from. I don't mind telling people that. I mean, I tell people about Brooke everywhere I go. Yes. I was like, if Brooke was not there, I don't think I'd be where I'm at right now because Brooke showed me how to hustle. Oh, I mean, you know, <laughs> I went to. Yes. Was, I was selling. Yes. I, I'm sorry. I was I was selling artwork while I was at Old Brook in high school. I was working with October Gallery, and they took come me on out. now. Yeah, so it, it's it made my dreams come true. I, I tell people that, and I tell them I was like, look, because of Brooke, I got a bachelor's, a master's degree. You know, been teaching for 20 years. Come on now. Yes, yeah, so I tell them. I say, hey, when they honored me at that reunion, that was like the highlight of my life right there. I was, I was like, I was like, man, to get to, <laughs> yes. to feel love from your peoples. That's a good thing. When you feel love from your peoples. Yes. You've been with them for four years in the churches, you know, and, and you know, just watching people like watching That's Malik. That's right. Watching Malik blow up and everything and watching from team and all them blow Come up. Come on. Yeah, because yes. it, it's funny because yes. I it was I had to, I actually bought my yearbook in just to show my students because they didn't realize I knew I knew Malik. They didn't realize it. I said I copied oh, yeah. my yearbook. Oh yeah, 
that's a game changer when you pull that card out. That's a oh, game yeah. changer when people know you know Malik because he yeah. just he's just still handling his business. I remember a few years ago, you just mentioned Fatine, and I'm very, very proud of Fatine and his wife. And for those of you all who don't know, um, we went to school with uh, Fatine Danzler, and he and his beautiful wife, Asia, they have a group called Kindred, and their music is just beautiful. I still listen uh, to their music to this day. And we're just so proud of you because when I pull out my Chad Everett (laughs) card, you know, Cortez Everett card, honey, the, the artist that's, you know, making moves in Philly with SEPTA. Yes, he is an Overbrook Panther and people need to know. So we are always proud of you. What are some of your memories uh, with with Overbrook, with, with just interacting with some of the guys back then? Do you have a special story of anyone in particularly? They could be famous or not, or in their way or not. But what's some of your memories that are precious and dear and near to your heart? I have so many memories from Brooke. I mean, Brooke bored me out my shell because I, when I went to Overbrook, I, I, I went there because of the ER program. And when I got there, you know, everybody was so inviting. It wasn't any kind of ego tripping or anything. Everybody was just, everybody was just straight up everybody. You know, it was, it wasn't like any, you know, it, it was clicks there, of course, but it wasn't like, you know, people always included you. They never excluded you from anything. Yeah. I mean, I, I guess my fondest memory of Overbrook was I will never forget, and that's since we're speaking about the team. It was at the it was a talent show. We had a talent show at Brook. I remember we had a Ooh. talent show there, and yes. we we were battling yes. other schools. I remember it was some kind of battlement when we Uh-oh. were battling other schools. I, I don't I know if there. you remember that. Yeah, and remember yes. when we got I do right, remember because the team was singing. I'm not gonna I'm not gonna steal your thunder. I'm gonna let you tell the story <laughs> since you brought it up. But go so, ahead. So what happened, what happened was it was a, it was like the battle of the bands. It was like we were going, I've got the other school that we were yes. going against, but they came in, they talking trash, we talking trash. And at that time, Boys and Men was yeah. hot. Boys and Men was hot and everybody yes, was doing yes, acapella groups yes, and everything. Were. And I remember, I've got, I think it was West Philly. Was it West Philly? I'm not sure. But they came out on stage and, you know, they, they had their guys doing their Boys and Men rendition. Then we had our guys doing our boys and men rendition. Yeah. And, and then Fatim was like, whoa, 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 whoa. I'm going to come up here. I'm going to I'm going to show you how this is done. <laughs> yeah, I remember he lit the stage up. Uh-huh. And, and you I know what he's saying? I remember what he's saying. You remember what it was? I think it was Sex You Up. He said, it? it's written all over oh, your yeah. face. <laughs> he sang that song. Yeah, he started saying that. It, it may have been one of the other ones, too. But when he, when he sang that, he shut it down. Fatigue yeah, shut it down. I was like, okay, Fatigue. Yeah, because he made he put us back. I mean, Wes was like, oh man, you guys can't do anything at Brook. And he got out there and he shut them down. All he had to do is just shut drop the mic down. and walk off the all he had to do is drop the mic and walk <laughs> off the stage. That's all he had to do. Yes. I knew right there. When I seen him yes. on there, I was like, I was like, this brother gone places. <laughs> I was like, he's oh, gone yeah. places. Oh, yeah. And then looking yeah. at John, when John used yeah. to sit up there and perform and everything. Jazz ensembles and all that. I was oh, like, man. wow. So it yes. was it was definitely Yeah, his energy, John's energy, yeah, his energy was always good. Just always good energy. Nothing but high level, always smiling, always happy. And even with your art, I always knew. I was like, Chad, he gonna be making moves. Okay. Thank you. That thank was you. always just a known fact. Yeah, absolutely. Yes, thank you for sharing that. Um that uh memory with us um and actually Fatine had invited me when he and his wife came a few years ago they came here to Houston and they had invited me out but I had just had Kalina mm-hmm. and so I couldn't make it you know but that was in you know because I had her in the winter time too but that was very very thoughtful of them both and I'm sure we'll connect sometime soon we're all on Facebook and on Instagram and all of that good stuff. So good memories, good stuff. Oh yeah, and it was a, it was another one more memory, one more. It was yeah, yes, yeah. share, so I, please share. I ran for student council, believe it or not. I actually, I, I was a treasurer for some reason. I won the treasurer position, mm-hmm. and I will never forget because it was the day we had to get up on stage and speak to the, to the um, speak to the seniors and everything. And mm-hmm. I was not good at public speaking. I didn't, you know, this is my first time getting up in front of people and speaking and everything. That one experience, I remember I got up on stage, I started walking around. I just sat down on stage and started talking with the mic in my hand. And people were like, who the hell are you? 
It was just, I was so bold and brave. <laughs> and that's one thing that Brooke made me, Brooke showed me that, look, you can go ahead and put yourself out there. Just go ahead and put yourself out there. Don't be afraid of who you are. Just be you and articulate what Absolutely. you want to say. And that was one thing I, I loved about Brooke was it never, ever, never, ever shut me down. It just kept letting me rise up. It kept letting me be myself. And I, I tell anybody, yes. I mean, yes. I wouldn't mind going back again, but. <laughs> put you out there to let you shine. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Letting you shine. Now, you have won some distinguished awards. Now, I did read your bio, and everybody will hear that in the podcast, but I just want you to talk a little bit about maybe one or two awards that you have won, because there are some inspiring um, artists out there, and they're listening in, and I'm sure some of the things that you have done they're like, wow, you know, I look forward to attaining my master's and I look forward to becoming an educator and helping to lead my students through exhibitions and perhaps opening their own studio and becoming, you know, well known for exhibitions. And so just tell us some, you know, share some memories about some of your favorite uh, awards that you've won. I guess the first the first award that really got me started and this was back in high school. This is back in high school. I didn't realize how good my work was until, and so one day I'm at the convention center. And usually what they would do every year, they will have a gigantic art show with all the, you know, all the art students within all the art schools in Philadelphia. And Bro Overbrook always shined. I mean, we always shined at these art shows. Come on so now. That, Come that, on that, particular, now. that particular year, I put a painting in there. I put a painting in there and everything. and. Mm -hmm. You know, I won an award. I won an award. And, you know, I'm looking at it. And at this time, I was winning awards. Like, I won one from the NAACP. I won one from, you know, it was some other awards that I won. But this award was really special for the simple fact. I didn't realize that I could take my talents and transfer them into money. So what happened was, I'm, at the, award ceremony. I'm at the award ceremony. They called my name. And I'm, like, walking down the aisle and everything. And they hand me an envelope, basic envelope. and the mm. people that gave me this money, I think it was a link organization. I think that's the name of it. So I'm looking at the I'm looking at the envelope and I'm like, okay, okay, it's probably twenty five dollars or whatever. And I had my buddy Michael Blue with me because he also wants something also. So I'm so I'm I sitting remember, up in there. I remember Mike Blue. <laughs> yeah, and, and him and myself, we won something at this award show. So we went down together to the convention center. And I got they gave me the envelope, and I opened the envelope up, and it was like seven hundred dollars up in that bad boy. <laughs> and I'm looking, I'm like, whoa. Mm -hmm. And I mm -hmm. went to I went to the yes. I went to the organizers and I was like, yo, is is this a mistake? Because this is seven hundred dollars up in here and one hundred dollar bills. And they were like, <laughs> you know, I'm, I'm off the streets. I'm I came off the streets and any, if you walk around with seven hundred dollars, you walk around with seven hundred dollars in your pocket, that means you're doing some illegal activities. So it it was just so weird. They they gave me them, you know, I looked in there, I was like, You sure this is my money, right? They were like, Yeah, it's your money. And I will never forget. I ran, I ran out of the convention center. I had Mike with me. I was like, Mike, I was like, man, I, I got seven hundred dollars on me. He was like, No, you don't, man. I said, like, I do, man, I do. So I opened it up and showed it to him and everything. First thing I did, I called my mom up. I called her up on the pay phone, because yes. I, you know, we didn't have cell phones. <laughs> So I called yeah, my back mom. Back then we had the pay phone. That's yeah, awesome. Yeah, the old pay phone, the rotary, everything, rotary dial tone. So I called my mom <laughs> up and I was like, mom, mom, I won an art contest. And she's like, oh, you know, because she knew I was winning them. But, you know, $25 here, $25 there, it really wasn't a big thing. But I was, right, like, right. I was like, mom, I got like $700 on me. And she was like, she's like, you need to bring your beep home. <laughs> so it's just like that. She's like, you need to bring it home. Yes, She's yes. like, you, you walking yes. down the street with that kind of cash on you, you need to get home. <laughs> and I will never forget. I got home and my mom looked at the money and she's looking at me and she's like, looking at me, just nodding her head. My like, son is the... Yeah, you can actually... She looked at me, she's like, you can actually make mm -hmm. money off of this. And I remember we opened up a savings oh, absolutely. account. Yeah, that was probably the biggest prize that, that to date that I, you know, bring back a lot of memories because... It let me know that yes. I could take it to the next level. Overbrook trained me enough where I can actually now. make a little bit of an income off of doing art. And that was, to me, that was like the, yes. the shining moment. That was like the highlight. And then just 
hearing the scholarships and everything, the scholarship scholarship money's coming in and everything. I'm like, wow, you know. So Yes, that, that was just amazing that they touched you in that way and helped you to dream even more. Um, I love artwork. It depending on which artwork you have, it definitely is an investment and appreciates in value. And you know, you can pass it on to generations to generations because I actually have a priceless piece to myself um, that was gifted to me from my aunt and, you know, a few others. So I, I love artwork and um, I love to just be stimulated um, by the arts. Now, you also won the regional art exhibition at the Center for Creative Arts in Delaware in 2010. Can you tell us about that? Oh, yeah, that right there. I'm trying to remember that. because <laughs> That? Well, the- wait a minute. I got a few others. You could pick one. And also the African-American Coalition of Reading and PA named the Artist of the Year for your contributions in your community. You also, okay, in, in the summer of 1990, you attended the Pennsylvania Government School of Excellent, Excellence, Visual and Performing Arts for acquiring an outstanding art portfolio. And I mean, for you to attend the Governor's School of Excellence, that in itself is an award, whether people understand it or not. Because not everybody's getting in. Oh, yeah. It was very competitive. That was, we competed. That's huge. Yeah, I competed huge. with everybody within the state of Del- within the state of PA for that right there. Yes. back in 1990. I will never forget when I, um, because at that time, Leslie Camerson, who was the art teacher at Overbrook, his idea, he ran us like, he ran that place like, like the Jackson 5 dad ran them. Literally, I mean, All it was right. like a, it was Come a boot camp. Now. It was a boot camp of artists. <laughs> That's what it was. It was a boot camp. And he trained All us. Right. He, told, he told us, he was like, if you listen to me, I can get you into college. I can get you anywhere you want. And at first we laughed at first. Come then, on now. Then, at, you know, then we started realizing when, when people were knocking down the doors, wanting to see what we were doing in the studios and the newspapers want to do articles, on, on articles about us. And the best thing about it, you know. Most of most of the people that did graduate me from out the art program, some of them are still doing art, some of them are not. But you know, I mean, I, I tell I tell anybody, it's I'm still going to continue doing this. <laughs> it's just a it's a part of my life. It's just yes. something that that I can yes. something I tell people. I love going to work. <laughs> I don't hate going. I love going. I love doing mm. what I do because it's just me with my materials, and I'm trying it's to say a part a message. Of you. Oh, yeah, definitely. So, you know, I tell people, a lot of young artists ask me, how can I make money, this and that? And I was like, you got to find your voice. And you can't look at trying yes. to find money. Money will come to you if you're passionate about what you do. Any, any field. Come on it, now. Yes, it will. It will. Come. I'm and, a witness. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yes, if the money will you. come. The checks will come. And all money, the, the coins will come. The dollars will come. The checks will come. It will come. But you have to develop your your area of expertise and you don't necessarily have to pigeonhole yourself, but you have to be excited and joyful about what it is that you're doing. And those opportunities will open up. So absolutely. Um, I also wanted to let you know that here in Houston, we have a, an art district and we have over 300 plus studios Um it's, it's just such an array of designers, uh, local artists. Um, they have like the Center for Photo- uh, Photographic Art exhibitions. They have galas, sponsorship opportunities, workshops, murals, just everything. And I always think about you as I am venturing out to, uh, you know, the museum district, you know, um, the arts district. Um, the Museum of Fine Arts, uh, I used to actually be a member there for years. Um, and they, they consistently have different exhibitions. And it's just breathtaking when you really sit back and you think about what goes on in the mind of a human being that they conceptualize so many different objects and people and places and put it together to just make art <clears throat> Excuse me. It is really, truly just magnificent. So, you know, what are, how has your faith played a a role in some of the things that you've done and and some of the accomplishments as we're 
preparing to close out your interview. How has your faith played a role for you in, in all that you've done? Oh, it plays a lot. I'm not going to say a lot of you guys. My work has a spiritual type. Um, it resonates it has a spirituality resonation to it because I tell people all the time, and, I, and it's just I'm happy to be where I'm at. I am very grateful. I mean, I wake up sometimes. I thank God for everything I have. I actually, I do, I write out what you call, I do gratitude books. I sit down and I write out Mm -hmm. things that I am very happy about. The reason why, because some people, they focus on the negative way too much. We focus on negative way too much. When you sit down and write out the positive things that are happening in your life, all that, all that negativity just floats away. And I, and I try to encourage my students. Yes. I was like, why focus on the negative when you got so much going on in your life? You woke up this morning. That's a plus. Yes. You know, you got food on the table. That's yes. a plus. You got clothes on your back. So I tell people, you know, it's okay, it's okay to let people know that you are religious. I mean, I don't go around and hit people over the head yes. and say, you're going to burn in hell or anything. I don't do that. <laughs> but I, but I, I do, I celebrate it in my artwork because I want you know, to me, yes. to me, spirituality is somewhat of a binding force within my work. You know, it, I'm just grateful that these experiences yeah. have fallen in my lap. Nobody else has experienced. I tell people, I was like, look, yeah. I came out of Barton Village Projects. Now where I'm at now, I'm mm-hmm. I'm not I'm nowhere now. I'm nowhere near where I came from, and it's the reason why. And I and people I, I might have a few atheist friends that might explain it away. God is like, with you all the way. Yeah. I was like, he's with me all the way. I mean, in my worst times, that's right. I always get down. I thank Ooh. God. I thank him through the good and the bad and the ugly. I thank him all the time because that's right. Come on now. I tell people, I say, like, hey, it's okay. It's okay to it's okay to know that there is a higher being than you out there in the world. And that's the thing. That's I, I right. tell people, I say like, right. I'm not afraid to put religion in the work. I'm not afraid to do that. I'm not afraid to sit down and tell people and testify yeah. like what I. That's went the through. beauty. That's the beauty of being in the United States of America. You know, oh, yeah. um, what inspires you inspires you. You know, regardless of where people are in their spiritual walk and their beliefs and things of that nature. Now, I see you got a Temple University uh, jacket <laughs> on over there, sweatshirt. What's going on over there? You want to talk talk to us a little bit about Temple? Before we close out. Oh yeah, Temple. Oh, I just got through. I had a they had they invited me to do a discussion panel on art marketing on uh, the Temple Alumni Association. This was like two weeks ago. They invited me and they were like, Hey Chad, we heard what you're doing out in the community. Can you come and talk with some of the some of the alumni some of the um alumni students as well, some of the students that are soon to be graduating. So I sat on a panel for about an hour and we just talked talk shop about, you know the expectations when you graduate out of college and this and that. And it was good. I mean, it was very, very, very therapeutic because of the simple fact it's nice that people want to hear your stories. People want to hear how did you get from point A to point B? And I, and I always tell people, I was like, look, I let God, God was my GPS, GPS to begin with. He, I mean, he guided me and so many, he gave me so many opportunities yes. and opened yes. up so many doors for me. It's like, I, it was hard to believe yes. for me to sit down here and, and, and explain to you guys. It's like even it was funny because Brooke played a major part in this. I will never forget when I had to go. I had to right. take my portfolio to Tyler School of Art in order for them to interview me. And I remember Mr. Camison, my teacher, our teacher who helped me. He was like, just go to the interview and be yourself. Let your artwork do the talking. And he said that, and I took Come my portfolio on. with me to Temple University. I showed them my artwork that I did when I was at um, Overbrook, and they were blown away by it. They gave me some scholarship money, and I went there for five years. Then after that, I was like, I'm going to go get my master's now. <laughs> I went to go get my Come master's. On. All and right. It was, I mean, Brooke gave me the swagger that I needed because I came to real, it came, I came <laughs> It came to a realization. You got that swag. Go ahead, yeah, Chad. you have to. You gotta have that swag. It, it came to me through just like I said when I yeah. went up there and did my speech <laughs> for, for treasure and everything. That same energy came out uh-huh. through everything that I do. I mean, I was able to go to graduate school and just just hustle my way into graduate school. They gave me scholarships and everything. And even now, 
with my schools. Like I used to go on stage and do talent shows with my students and everything. And they're looking at me like, Mr. Ari, you know you could sing. <laughs> I'm looking, I'm like, well, there's a lot of things you kids didn't know that I could do. It's just the confidence level. You know, it's like, you, you know, that's one thing. Brooke makes us look good. We get out there and, and out in public and negotiate yes, and navigate. Yes. You know, people, I tell them more than Magley. You know, I got all, I'm sorry. No, no, go ahead. Yeah, I tell people. I say, Brooke. Go ahead. You kinda, tell people all the time what? Go ahead. What you yeah, tell, I tell them? them? Brooke made me what I am. I'm not afraid to go talk to anybody. You can sit me down there to talk with Biden. I can hustle I can hustle Biden <laughs> real quick. It doesn't matter. Because that's a, guys, it's just mm. a part. Part of being around being around you guys most of my four years, it showed me how I can communicate better and communicate effectively with with people. And I tell people all the time, I was like, man, yeah. especially my high school students, when I run across, I was like, high school is going to go by real fast. It's going to go by extremely fast. Enjoy it. Enjoy oh, the ride because that by. ride is, I didn't realize, I mean, when I graduated from out of Overbrook, man, I, I felt mm. I felt that emptiness for a couple of months. I felt not getting up. Yeah. Yeah. Going to it's, studio. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Not going to the studio and what? Not going to Cause you know, we, we were up there with the art magnets. We had our own little studios and everything. We we're going there and working our paintings. Mm-hmm. And once we graduated, I, I said, man, is it, is it really over with? And I'm looking at them. They looking at me. They're like, yeah, Chad. And I, you know, it was just hard for me to adjust afterwards, but I was able to adjust, but it was just, man, just the memories. Then when I see you guys out there yes. on television and everything, I speaking of Will Smith, <laughs> since you're talking about him, I, who was the math teacher, the algebra math teacher we had? Because they did a behind the story with Will Smith and they showed Ms. the Brown. math teacher. Yeah, they showed Ms. Brown on there. And I'm looking, I'm like, yeah, I see Ms. Brown on there. It was a, a, a good clip that they um, put together about um, his memory of her and her speaking about speaking so highly of him um, because Will was always smart, always smart. And um, it's funny because I've had people ask me where my sons, his sons, and <laughs> 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 because of their ears, you know, their ears. Yeah. And I, and I used to be like, um, I would not be down here on, at 52nd and market at the YMCA. Okay. <laughs> 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 that was my son's father. <laughs> you know, that is just hilarious to be at. People would ask me all the time, is that Will Smith's son? Is that? No. <laughs> if it was, I wouldn't be here. I wouldn't be here. But yeah, um, was, I mean, it was definitely some good experiences there. I mean, man, it was. Whew. Yeah. yeah I, it, was, it was it was it was one of the best times. And it's funny because it's, it goes back to what you said. You could not trace or order your steps the way that your steps went. And I feel the same way. There's no way that I could have been born into the family that I've been born into, touch the hands of greatness of the people that I have. I didn't have to do anything other than uh, be born and live in that district in order to go to that school and meet so many people of greatness that I've met, that I've been able to reconnect with, you know, and some just, just stay in touch with, but it's, we all stay in touch, but, you know, with the podcast, it's an opportunity to actually showcase the skills and the talents that you all have, because I just love to do that. I'm like my grandfather and my mother. They were our fearless cheerleaders and everything in me that they saw, they used to point it out. Leona, you need to do this. Leona, you, you need to write your books. Leona, you, you girl, you're going to be a nurse. You're going to do this. You're going to do that. And they used to just encourage me and inspire me so much that I just have that gift of speaking life into people. And, and, and I can look and speak with a person or I'll be around someone. And the next thing you know, a few years down the line, that person is on the television or doing something great, giving back to the community. I just interviewed um, Joey Zazzalino the other day. and He was talking about that. So I am just so happy that you made time out of your schedule, Chad, to talk to me today. And can you tell the people where to go, how to find you and what is coming next? Well, folks, if you want to learn more about me, you can check out my website. That's www.chadchadcevereett.com. 
art, A-R-T dot com. You can just Google search me. I'm everywhere on Google, folks. I'm everywhere out there. So my next projects right now, I am, I'm going to continue to work for about five more years, do my 25 with my district that I'm currently with right now. And then I'm going to probably span off and try some, just really focusing on the art. Cause I mean, it's calling my name. I mean, man, you know, when you're so passionate about something, when you sleep, that's all you think about. When you wake up, that's all you think about. When you're doing other things, you think about it. And it's getting to that point where I'm, I'm at a point now where I, I just want to be in the studio, also out in the community, making making things happen. Hmm. Well, we are proud of you, Chad, and we will let everyone know exactly what you have going on and continue to share your work. Thank you so much for coming to join me today. Thank you.